So let's literally jump into some of the famous presets. presets. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I am a good keyboard player because I'm not. But I'm going to try and play jump. And let's try and have a listen to Axel F. Luft balloons. And my favorite, which is the Prince Crazy Organ beginning of Let's Go Crazy. Dearly beloved. <laughs> Very, very nice. So just as an intro, this synth is an upgrade to the OPX Pro 2. Now I've had the OPX Pro 2 for five years or six years myself, and I know that this has been around at least since 2011, might be even older than that, I'm not sure. So we're talking about an upgrade that is well over 10, 12 years difference between the two. In terms of look and feel and functionality, we actually have some very, very similar things between the first and the second in terms of the buttons and the, the way you call up presets. The volume is still here. The ADSR envelopes and filter envelopes is kind of all in similar places, but there seems to be less clutter. So the way the master polyphony in particular is set up seems to be a lot more logical. And I really like how the arpeggiator is now in the bottom left and it has more kind of logical layout. And I like this kind of little screen here that gives you all of these arpeggiator options. Before you just had the number but now you can actually see really what you're choosing properly. So in terms of features, there's no better place than to go to their website, but you can see here now we've got 12 voices on separate turntable voice boards. You've got this new semi-modular design. You've got mod matrix with five slots, five envelopes, four LFOs. I think before we had three LFOs, 10 filter types. We'll go through the filter a bit later. These filter types are morphable, so you can morph between different filters. It's got a 32 mode arpeggiator and MIDI processor. It had a pretty good arpeggiator before, but the layout now is very, very good, much better. New modulation effects and built-in presets. And as you can see here, and I'll put a link to this website, you can see how this is all laid out and how it all works. And it's really, really well explained. And there is a lot there. The combinations of LFOs, envelopes, filters, and filter envelopes and LFO envelopes is really powerful and gives you so, so much sound design possibility. So let's get straight into it. So one area that's pretty complex is the mod matrix. And if you have a look at it and you click down, it looks a little bit kind of daunting when you first look at it in terms of source and the way it works to get the, what they've done is if you click on the preset section and you click on mod matrix, they've actually gone ahead and created all these types of different types of use cases that you could use yourself for the mod matrix. So for example, with LFO speeding up, the LFO rate will be dictated by the mono envelope. So let's just take a listen. So that's pretty cool. And then you've got different types of LFO. So one that I like is the velocity of spread. So if we click on this one here, the actual spread will be dictated to by the velocity. So how hard you press the keyboard. So if I just play the keyboard just softly like this. So that's low velocity, but if I hit it harder, you can see that spread is really being activated. These presets are really useful as starting points, and then you can go ahead and change your sounds. And then obviously there's a whole bunch of other things. I'm not gonna go through, but there's a whole bunch of other things you can do in the mod matrix. The filter section is super nice. So let's just go in and listen to the sounds with the default preset. Let's just increase that filter now. In the envelope. 
So let's now talk about the filter, which is supremely powerful and very, very flexible. The first thing I want to do is click on the learn button so we can use these knobs. So I'm going to click on learn and CC learn appears and on the cutoff, move the knob. So I think the best way to demonstrate it is just to take all of the voices off. It will just demonstrate with one voice. <laughs> And I'm gonna have the arpeggiator on like that. So that's on a hold pattern. We just reduce some of the these filter envelope values and the actual envelope. Okay, now let's just play with the default cutoff. Speed this up a bit. speed this up a bit here. I like the interface now you can actually see a little bit better what you're doing. Resonance and envelope amount. Now it plays really well here with the filter envelope. So you've got all these different types of filter options. So you've got hard, 24 dB MG and this is stuff you can play around with yourself I'm not going to try and understand or explain every single aspect and then you've got the DMP values here so I believe this is the opening value so for for example if you want a brilliant sound that's how it sounds at the beginning if we switch the oscillator off We should be able to hear more about how the cutoff sounds. Can add some noise. So that filter envelope. If you can see here, it's attached to FE, so let's just increase the values there. Let's reduce that again, and it was also uh, linked, the mix is also linked to LFO. Let's just reduce the rate there. square sign. Let's have them both on. Sync to BPM. We can actually have both the LFO and the filter envelope on at the same time. It's crazy powerful. Increase the key there. Self os. We can actually increase the mix as well. So what you have is just the envelope and LFO sounds coming through. Let's try unison. This is going to sound amazing. No. Oh no, because we need all of the sounds selected. Let's do that. Just getting rid of that noise sound. Change the mix to go the other way now. And you can actually 
do a mix here between high pass and uh, low pass. We can just select them directly. Or neither. So I believe we have four oscillators here. So let's just increase the pitch of the first one. Just the first one, and we use a square wave there. Let's choose a preset. We'll choose an arpeggio preset here. One that's a bass because I like the bass sounds here a lot. Choose this Jupiter arpeggiator. Now let's play with the cutoff. Let's open with a max DMP. So as you can hear there, that filter sounds amazing with the arpeggiator and it just, the whole thing sounds superb. Now we've got the filter boards and the master polyphony. So you can see here we've got 12 notes active. And what you can do here is for each note, you can actually just pan them left or right. And increase the volume as opposed to where they end up on the filter so for this particular instance you can increase the filter and you can do that for every note the envelope the portamento oscillator spread so you can do quite a bit and then you've got these kind of auto settings here as you click on tuned if you click on any of these, they'll auto set the panning. And if you want to reduce the amount of voices, we could just go down and click the voices off like that. And this is linked to the filter. So let's go ahead and mess around with the filter. And if you click on the boards, you've got more functions and you can actually see it really clearly, the each note that you're playing and the uh, amount that you sent each note. You can see there, that's a note. See each note I play. And for each one, you can send the values to a filter. So that's pretty cool. So you can have a lot of fun with that. And it's actually a little bit complicated for me because I'm just still learning how to use this. Uh, it actually is similar to OP2, but its layout means you've got more possibilities. So let's just go into the effects and have a quick look at the effects. So for example, for every sound that we have, let's change sounds here. So we'll just go ahead in the presets and click on one of the famous sounds here. The axle left sound will do. So what you need to do then is click on effects on and edit so we can actually hear the effects. So you've got width, size, You've got sync here, so you can sync to dotted sync. So let's just listen to that. And 
and you have all of these presets. So you can hear that you can have a pretty massive sound here. And you can sync to the DAW. Now if I want, I can just simply save my preset. We can call it Axle F or whatever you want to call it. So you've got After Touch Settings, Master Tune, You've got pitch modulation for the pitch wheel and a whole bunch of other cool things. So basically from my first playing ever, this is the first time I've actually really gone into the synth, um, I've able, been able to get some pretty decent sounds and I believe this is a very, very usable synth and will give you some incredible and unique sounds that you won't really find in other synths. This has a real gorgeous analog feel to it. So it's here. You can download a demo, give it a go yourself. It is super fun. And uh, although the installation was a little bit fiddly, I've got to say, it took me a while <laughs> to install. I think it's great and I'm really glad that it's here.